Hey everybody, what's up? Just out here in the tackle room working for a few minutes, getting ready for Lake Louisville Bassmaster Open leaving this weekend. Uh, been really busy this week. Uh, we're in the process of revamping all of our lake breakdowns with Fish the Moment. We're going to the GPS coordinates instead of um, other type of locations we've been using. And it's gonna make for a really slick map. So um, we've been working on that every daylight hour or every waking hour and trying to squeeze in a little bit of tackle preparation in between that to, to leave for Lake Louisville. And I've um, got some of my baits out here. And one of the things I wanna talk about today is swim jigs, particularly the new Mega Bass UO Swimmer uh, swim jig, which I wanna go over sort of in detail in this particular um, YouTube video. Swim jigs um, are one of my favorite ways to catch bass in the fall time of the year. They, they're good all year long, but in the fall time of the year when the bass and a lot of the shad, gizzard shad and threadfin shad start to move shallow up in the back of the coves, back of the creeks, um, the swim jig can be really, really good as far as in this, these type of areas. Um, and this particular swim jig, the new Mega Bass UO swim jig, is something that it's just, it's the best swim jig I have ever seen in my life. And I, I just don't want to say that and throw that out there just as like some obvious plug because I want to go over the bait a little bit more. As you can see there, you've got the, the realistic fish head design with the gills and everything on it. And the thing about this particular head is this head really runs true in the water. A lot of times when you're fishing a swim jig, sometimes the bait will tend to run off to the side a little bit but the design of this head on here keeps that bait in a perfectly straight line. <clears throat> and on top of that, <clears throat> excuse me, on top of that, it just, it's a very, very realistic fish looking head. And the hook on the thing's awesome. There's two different sizes basic I like to use. You've got the 316th, so it's got the three out hook and the larger sizes. And this is a half ounce here with the four rod. It's got a, you know, really nice needle point wide gap hook with this fluorine coating on it, a real slick coating on there. And this hook is, like I said, it's got the combination of, of being super stiff and, and yet it's light wire diameter, which I think is really key for a swim jig. You don't want a swim jig with a hook that overpowers the look of the bait. Um, and then it's got a nice fine weed guard that I trip, trim down, works really good. But one of the unique features about this is the blade on here. You got a, you got this, titanium wire coming off the bottom of the swim jig with a number, uh, just a tiny number three silver willow leaf on there. And this adds a lot of added flash to the bait, uh, particularly in clear water, in a dirty water situations, really sort of like a cross between a, a swim jig and a subtle spinner bait. So this particular blade on here adds a lot to the bait that you don't get with traditional swim jigs. And the good thing about this, um, sometimes the blade is key that they really want it. And sometimes, you know, uh, for whatever reason, like in super shallow, super shallow water, um, if the fish are really finicky, they don't want the extra flash. So I'll just take a pair of dikes and just cut it off. And I've got just the regular high quality swim jig. A lot of good uh, different type of skirt options on this too, color wise. But I, I sort of want to show you the trailers I use on this. Um, my favorite and how I set it up. First of all, what I do, on my swim jigs, see how uniform that skirt is? You don't want that. What you want to do is you want, and I prefer to do this with my fingers instead of uh, scissors, is come through here and just pull off some of the, the bottom parts of the strand of the skirts. And what this is gonna do is you're gonna, it gives you some irregularity as far as in how the skirt looks. A little bit more. See, see how a lot of the skirt, it's not uniform, it's broken up a little bit. And I find that this is really key a lot of times, you know, just getting a few more strikes on the thing. So that's the first thing I do is I take some of that skirt out there, make it a little bit, you know, just rough it up a little bit. Then I'll flip it over. This is key too. When you flip it over, make sure all the strands are away from the keeper. Another good thing about the UO swim jig, it's got a super nice keeper on the thing. You can see that right there. And that's one of the most frustrating things about swim jigs. They are the ones that don't have keepers because your plastic slides down there. But that, that uh, keeper on there keeps it really nice. And my favorite swim jig trailer is the uh, Mega Bass 3 inch Spark Shad. Um, <clears throat> sometimes on the I'll go to the four inch, but I really like the three inch for a lot of different reasons. Come through there, 
when you're putting your trailer on a swim jig, you need to really make sure that you come through perfectly in the center because that's really critical to get that bait to run straight. If you come, if, if your bait's not perfectly straight, a lot of times it'll run off to the side. And also you wanna make sure that it comes in where it's, it's level with the hook like that. You don't want it where it's curled up like this too much or down. So sometimes you gotta play with that and get it right. And so that's my setup there. Nice little compact shad looking swim bait. And like I said, here's the more finesse version of it like that, the 3 16ths with a smaller hook. I really like this little finesse one here. This is one of the few really finesse swim jigs on the market. Um, you know, it said super small, super stiff wire hook on there. This is just an outstanding bait all the way around. Now, as far as equipment setup on the thing, um, a lot of people, a lot of people use braided line with swim, swim jigs and I do not like using braided line because a lot of times I like to drop my swim jig down, you know, maybe a foot or two in the water column. I'll work it past a piece of cover and I'll drop it down like a jig. And I feel if I got braided line on there, the fish can really see that braided line really good. So I'm using anywhere between 17 to 25 pound test fluorocarbon. On the 3 16ths, I may even go down to 15 pound test line because it's really light. Um, and I usually normally use it on a seven foot rod. I use the Mega Bass um, Roshi XS, X, XS, excuse me, XX Perfect Pitch, which is a, you know, fairly heavy, you know, medium heavy rod on the thing. I can really get good penetration yet make long casts on the thing. So that's my setup pretty much, you know, Uzo, uh, swim, Uzo swim jig, uh, three inch spark shad with it, you know, 15 to 20 pound test four carbon line. Um, swim jigs are very versatile bait. You don't have to, most people equate swim jig fishing basically with fishing around shallow grass. And that's not the case. You can catch swim jig fish around any type of object on the bank just down bare rock banks, open banks. It's just a really great bait to cover a lot of water with. But retrieve is really key on a swim jig. One of the big things on a swim jig is you just don't want to cast it out there and swim it back in. You want to hop it, you want to keep it moving, you want to keep it moving erratic, you want to drop it down, let it sink once it gets past cover. Sometimes I'll break the surface on the thing. And also experiment with your colors too. You know, my favorites, you know, are the shad patterns, but at times, they really like a perch pattern, some type like a, you know, some type of a green pumpkin, brown, uh, you know, black chartreuse, something perchy like that at times, uh, particularly during the post spawn, they like that perch pattern and early into the summer. But in the shad, in the fall time of the year, um, this is the time of year they really prefer the shad patterns like that. So anyway, I'm gonna get back to doing a little rigging, getting back to making maps for fish the moment. Um, I just really encourage you all, check out our new maps, man. They're super slick. Go to fishthemoment.com, you know, click on the lake map breakdown section and uh, you can see everything we have to offer there. But I'll keep you updated as the week goes on. I'm going to be filming um, all my practice in the tournament for Fish the Moment. Uh, we'll be putting videos out on all, the, all those tournaments coming up. And hopefully I can go down there and get a solid, you know, top 10 finish, top 20 and, and you know, move up a couple more places every, every next two tournaments for the points and get in that elite series in 2021. So hope you guys are having a good day. We'll check in later on. See you.